All right, so we got a little bit of breaking news here on the $15 minimum wage. The Democrats in the Senate have officially voted no on Bernie Sanders' amendment to include the $15 minimum wage in the COVID relief bill. So we've been following through this entire process where Democrats were basically looking for an excuse to not include the $15 minimum wage in the bill. Um, first, it was Joe Biden and Kamala Harris refusing to override the Senate parliamentarians' advice, which was literally just advice that they could have simply ignored, and they refused to do that. In addition, they also refused to take on Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema on this fight, even though the $15 minimum wage is an overwhelmingly popular policy across the board, even in states like West Virginia, where about 63% of West Virginia voters support it. Um, somehow Joe Biden, the most powerful person in the world who could have a platform on any news outlet whenever he wanted, somehow there's no possible way that he could have applied pressure on Joe Manchin to do what his fucking constituents want. Um, we also had, again, Bernie Sanders introducing his amendment. And I mean, Democrats, not only as pointed out by David Serrata here, not only did Democrats um, not vote to include it as an amendment, but Democrats didn't even allow it to go to that point. So the thing to understand, these Democratic senators voting no on Sanders' procedural motion were voting to not even allow a vote on the actual minimum wage amendment. They voted to help the GOP make sure the Senate was not even allowed to consider it. So these are the names, again, as also pointed out here by the uh, Gravel Institute, $15 minimum wage just failed because eight Democrats voted against it. The Democrats broke their promise. The Democrats who voted against it are Joe Manchin, obviously, um, as expected, uh, John Tester, uh, Jeanne Shaheen, uh, Maggie Hassan, Angus King, Kirsten Cinema, Tom Carper, and Chris Coons. So... Listen, I, I don't know a more simple way to say this. Those are your enemies. Those are my enemies. These people who would not even allow it to be voted on as an amendment, but would side with the GOP in blocking this. I mean, you effectively are Republicans. This is a policy that is overwhelmingly supported across the board, across party lines, but within your own party too. So if you're going to be an elected representative and pretend like you're actually representing your constituents and you're not even willing to do the bare minimum, I mean, we know the facts on the $15 minimum wage. It would increase wages for 32 million Americans, okay? And not only would it help those Americans, it would help every other American because it boosts the economy. It allows your rate uh, point, your bargaining point for your own wage to increase as well along with that, even if you're not somebody who's making a minimum wage right now. Uh, we know that the $7.25 an hour is literally a starvation wage. Um, so this is really just embarrassing. I mean, this is the first big test, I guess, of Joe Biden's administration on what he's going to be able to do with legislation. And he's supposedly going to be or was supposed to be the new FDR. This is not how the new FDR would handle this type of situation, okay? At a time when we're in the middle of an economic crisis that's really only comparable to the 08 recession. I mean, come on, this is ridiculous. This was easy. The $15 minimum wage is long overdue. We also know that if it had just kept pace with inflation and productivity since around 1968, which is when wages became detached from inflation and productivity, then it would be at around $24 an hour right now. So a $15 minimum wage was already a compromise and they couldn't even get together the votes necessary with full control of the House, full control of the Senate and the presidency. They couldn't even get um, their own party to fall in line on this very popular and very simple political win um, that it could have been for them. And again, there's not going to be really a better time for this because the way that they were passing this COVID-19 bill was through the process of budget reconciliation, which means that they only needed the 51 votes, including Kamala Harris as a vice president of the Senate. Um, and so you're not going to get a better time than this with 51 votes. We still have the filibuster in place. You still have senators like Joe Manchin who are saying that under no circumstances would they ever agree to abolish the filibuster. So with all other pieces of legislation like the $15 minimum wage, presumably, if you're not going to abolish the filibuster, you would need 60 votes for it. So if you can't even get the, the 50 votes and plus Kamala Harris within your own party, what exactly is your strategy moving forward to get 60 votes on an issue like this? So, I mean, it's pretty simply Democrats conceding on the $15 minimum wage because you're not going to have an easier time to get it than right now. This tells you very explicitly and very clearly, and please don't let anybody tell you differently, that Joe Biden and his administration and a lot of these conservative Democrats don't want to pass the $15 minimum wage. It's that simple. 
Okay, if he wanted to pass the $15 minimum wage, Joe Biden would have applied a massive public pressure campaign on some of these conservative Democrats who were blocking it. Because again, there are way more Democrats within the Democratic Party that is elected in this body that do agree with it than those who are blocking it. So it would be on Joe Biden as the leader of the party to get those people in line. But he stood by, he let this happen, he took the advice of the Senate parliamentarian for no good goddamn reason. So I, this is just embarrassing. I mean, that's really all you can say about it. It's an embarrassing, embarrassing failure for the Democratic Party. They have completely broken one of their main promises here. Obviously, not a single Demo uh, not a single Senate Republican voted to proceed. We knew that this was going to be the case. That's not surprising. But I mean, again, this is just really pathetic. Democrats completely failing to live up to one of the major campaign promises of Joe Biden's presidency. If you don't want to get obliterated in the 2022 midterms or in the 2024 general election, then... You got to be doing the opposite of what you're doing right now.